people living in this small town of Cranbrook, British Columbia. His name is, well, Man Woman. Just follow the yellow brick Cadillac. I had a hot rod when I was a kid and, you know, picking up girls and... I love it because it's it expresses me. I don't like the idea of driving around in some anonymous vehicle that says nothing about anything. So just about everything I own has to express something about me, and that's the way I am. And the way man-woman is can change very quickly. Here he is in a costume he created called Mr. Death. Man-woman doesn't think of death as the end, more as a new beginning. After I had visions of going up into the light and becoming whole and becoming one, and I kept dreaming that I was both male and female, uh, or I was wearing women's clothing, I was always some kind of combination, very androgynous. People in my dreams would walk up to me and call me man-woman. And this went on for a couple of years, and finally I started signing my paintings, man-woman. You can think of man-woman as kind of a cultural freedom fighter trying to repackage the dominant images in our culture to help us look at them in new ways. Sometimes that's a tad uncomfortable. Take, for instance, the image at the center of much of man-woman's work, the swastika. The swastika was around long before the Nazis grabbed it. In fact, in many cultures, the swastika meant good fortune. There's two different uses of the swastika, and one is very, very sacred. And, you know, half the world's population still use it as their sacred symbol over in the Orient. Spiritual symbols are really about the, the coming together of heaven and earth, the coming together of the, the vertical and the horizontal, the male and the female. See, that's the swastika, and that's the swavastika. And it's like a, a male and a female. It's like uh, left and right. And so it, really these symbols have, um, like the swavastika is used by the Buddhists, and they're talking about the inner spiritual energies. And the, the swastika was the common good luck sign, and that's about having luck in your life and having good fortune in your outer life. Man-woman's outer life certainly seems to reflect his inner one, there's a lot of heart and soul in this home. At first glance, this stately Edwardian house looks pretty much like all the others on the block, but not when you look a little closer. I was a little hesitant when I first started doing this to my house because of, you know, public reaction and public conditioning about the nature of the symbol. So then I got a little bolder and I uh, designed this trellis with a swastika in it. And I went down to the local uh, guy at the ironworks place, Ornamental Ironworks. Turns out he's a German, and he's very, very nervous about swastikas. So that's when I had to start educating him about the incredible history that the swastika has independent from the Nazi movement. And Indeed, the swastika motif dates back thousands of years, from the Vikings to the Roman catacombs to ancient India. I've got tons of things around the house with swastikas in them. Here's a, an image I did of a goddess figure, because the swastika was always associated with the goddess who gave birth to the universe. And I just can't resist painting my house up. I painted this little thing about transcending death on the door. And uh, basically the whole washroom here, I call it the shrine of the porcelain bowl is uh, filled with swastika images from various cultures. And this is a basket from uh, American Indians, uh, made probably in about 1910. And here's another one up here. Unlike most visual artists, man-woman never has to worry about running out of canvas. He's wearing a permanent one. My first tattoo, I, I kept dreaming about it, so finally I got a friend who just had a couple of needles on the end of a pencil and took him about an hour to stab that in there. Very painful, and I thought that would be it, but I was wrong. My 
My wife, when we met, she really liked me. But, you know, I had this tattoo in the middle of my forehead. And even though she really liked me, she said to me, you know, I think we better call this off right now because there is no way I could possibly explain you to my parents. <laughs> I, I mean, I was very attracted to man woman. Uh, there was a real energy between us, and he's, he's a lovely person. Uh, but I thought, oh, gee, you know, how can I deal with this? And, uh, you know, things just took their course, and I, I don't even see the tattoos anymore, actually. So, you know, life goes on, and you get past all that. <laughs> Over the years, I've done hundreds of these uh, baby blessings. And uh, the most recent one I did, um, I actually ended up casting her, her belly and, and painting the, the blessing on it as an art object, just as an experiment. I haven't got any immediate plans to add things to the house, but... Uh, then I don't know what I'm going to think tomorrow and I might wake up with a brilliant idea and just be, just have to go out there and do it, you know. So, don't be surprised. Surprised? Gee, that's hard to imagine. Even the neighbors aren't surprised anymore. We always talked about uh, being able to uh, uh, put benches out here and uh, selling uh, Ticket uh, tickets for viewing. <laughs> for viewing. It's kind of a joke and we'd have to split the money. He wanted half of it, so... <laughs> I'm Arthur Black. Hope you enjoyed Weird Homes. We'll see you next time.